Hey there, thanks for checking out Coffee with Brett. I'm sitting here enjoying my coffee as per usual, but I'm also reflecting on this past year. You know, it's been a really wild ride in so many ways for all of us. And all I can say is that I hope that you're doing okay. And I hope that you're looking forward to a brighter 2021. I know that I am. I'm also thankful for so much, including the fact that, you know, I get to connect with our community and that's you. This is going to be my last episode before I vacate this home office for a couple of weeks and go into another room. But that doesn't mean that I won't be checking in on things and strategizing some plans for next year. I mean, I'm a PM. What can I say? We're always on, always thinking, always planning. So because this is going to be my last episode of the year, I wanted to talk about a topic that's, you know, really important to me. But I also think that it should be important to you because it's the one thing I think you can focus on as a project manager that will make your role easier. That's right, I said it, easier. Now, that doesn't mean that it's an easy thing to do, but you definitely have experience with this thing because you're a human, or at least I'm guessing you are. All right, I'm gonna say it. We're going to talk about how to build solid working relationships with your team. But before I jump in, I think this is kind of cool. I want to thank Jennifer for suggesting this topic in the comments on a previous episode. You know, I really like seeing all of your comments and requests, so please keep those coming. So today, I have five quick tips to help you get started with building solid relationships at work on your projects. Just keep in mind that these are high level ideas and they tend to be pretty personal and you're gonna personalize them, right? So what I'm leaving you with are some nuggets to work on and think about. So let's jump in. The first thing you should do is focus on building trust. That will lead you to better communications and better information flows, as well as stronger relationships. So how do you make that happen, right? How do you build trust? Well, I think if you do these four things, you'll be on the right path. First, always be honest. You know, there's no use in hiding information or even bad news. I think you should deliver the bad news at the same velocity as the good news. I also think that you should cultivate a reputation for straight talk. Of course, you should be kind and open to discussion, but just know that when you're honest, people will see and respect it. Next, be reliable. Think about it. When people miss deadlines, you probably lose faith in them, right? So you need to model that behavior. So when a report or a plan is due, deliver on it. Or when you say you'll pitch in and help on something, follow through. Next, focus on your communications. Be the person who's not bashful to share details, to have fun with communications, but most of all, to be clear and to the point. The last thing I'll mention here is that you need to admit fault when it's yours to admit. Listen, we all make mistakes. So when you make one, just be open about it and recover from it. I've said it a hundred times to project managers I've worked with. People will always remember your recovery more so than the mistake itself. And when you recover well, you'll build trust. I'm sure there's more here, but that should give you a lot to think about. We're moving on to number two in my list, which is to slow down and take the time to get to know people. So think about it. When you understand what someone does, how they prefer to do it, and even hear them talk about their work in their own way, you gain an understanding of that person. Then you can kind of dig deeper and get to know that person on an individual level. And when you gain that understanding and even share something about yourself, you're actively building a relationship. It's easy stuff. So take the time to do things like one-on-one -on -one meetings or to reach out during the day to see how that person is doing and if they need anything. And really just to make time for them, not just to check up on their work, but on them, check up on them. People will see and hear that. And when it's done genuinely with empathy, with the right timing, they'll feel it. And they'll likely want to reciprocate too. And that, my friends, is how a great relationship blossoms. Next, be a good listener. Think about your day-to-day -day and the way that you handle issues or even just the way you run meetings or check up on progress. Because you're usually rushed, you're a PM, it's very normal, you might come off as seeming a little bit robotic and you don't want that. I'm sure you're not a robot. But if you slow yourself down and make the check-in more conversational and you give people an opportunity to kind of really engage with you about their task, their question, their issue, or whatever it might be, and you show that you're truly listening and actually understanding what they're saying, 
they're gonna know that you're more invested in them. I'd also add here that there are simple ways to show that you're listening. You know, ask clarifying questions, take notes, send follow-up notes on discussions. You get the idea here. There are also some additional ideas here on screen. You can prove you aren't just listening, but that you actually care. After all, people like to be heard and cared for. I mean, don't you? It's logical. All right, next, show your work. By that I mean, actually show what you're doing each day and maybe even focus on how the work you're doing supports the overall success of the team and the project, but also on the individual level. You see, I think a lot of people don't necessarily respect or trust PMs because they think we're playing big brother or they think that we only care about deadlines and budgets. And you know that's not true. I certainly know that's not true. So show that it's not true. So when you have a meaningful conversation with a stakeholder, tell the team about it. When you've taken meeting notes, share them right away. When you've planned a project, share that plan and engage the team around it. To me, this is a really simple yet powerful act that works in getting people on your side or even showing them that you're already on their side. All right, here's the last one and it's ask for input. So as project managers, we kind of tend to want to address every issue in the moment on our own, right? Like we want to be Superman and it comes from a good place, but we just want to help and do a good job. But that can kind of be problematic, especially when you're stressed for time and you're not fully capable of actually handling those issues on your own. So part of me here is telling you to drop your ego. The other part of me is telling you to remember that projects require teamwork and partnership. Doing things like getting team members to review your plans, estimates, and even messages will help you to gain trust and build common understanding. And of course, build relationships. But I also want you to think about getting their input in discussions, even when they're not there. The next time a stakeholder asks you a detailed question that would be better answered by a team member, stop the conversation and tell them you'll get back to them. Go to that team member and get the information you need or maybe even pull that team member into the discussion if they're available. These are things that you can absolutely do and they'll save you. It's gonna help you in a few ways. First, it's gonna reduce your stress because you won't feel like you're faking an answer that could destroy all the trust that you've already built. Yeah, that would be bad. Second, it would give you an opportunity to talk to that person about the question and show them that you truly need and trust their input. And it can also put that person on a pedestal in a way because it shows that their expertise is really important, not only to the project's success, but to yours as well. And that, my friends, is the kind of behavior that shows how you feel about someone. And you can't make that stuff up. So with that, I bid you a happy holiday season and cheers to a better 2021 full of positivity, progress, project success, and of course, lasting relationships. Cheers.